Hi, I'm Thomas Hunt. And I'm Mike Hunt. And this is the Bad News Network. Well, you guys, it looks like we won't be able to celebrate the 4th of July this year. No playing cornhole in the front yard, no shotgunning countless light beers, and definitely no blowing off body parts with fireworks. Unless, of course, you want to, then you can really do whatever you want. Uh, just know President Biden will be very disappointed in you. It looks like the United States won't make the 70% of adults vaccinated by July 4th, a timeline the president gave the country and the beginning of his term. Hey, at least we tried, right? The White House acknowledged this news on Tuesday, but President Biden has yet to say anything himself, probably because of the sting of defeat. About 150 million U.S. adults are fully vaccinated, with 10 million more people projected to get the vaccine in the next couple of weeks. The White House did say that the goal that they set for themselves was a hefty one, and they were still proud of the progress that they have made. That is like telling your girl you were going to give her the ride of her life and parking the car after three minutes, and when she asks, what happened? You just look at her like, what, did you really expect me to last that long? We didn't set the goal for you, White House. That was all you. You failed your own test. The good news here is that most of the people who would be at more risk of getting COVID or even dying from it have taken the vaccine. Older people, healthcare workers, and individuals with health concerns are in the majority of people who are fully vaccinated, where the number of vaccinated Americans under the age of 30 is about 57%. Last week, President Biden boasted about the fact that the U.S. had administered 300 million COVID-19 shots in 150 days. I guess he will take the wins where he can get them, regardless of being vaccinated or not. We encourage everyone to have a safe 4th of July celebration. Even if you are vaccinated, you can still blow your hand off with a firework. You know eHarmony has failed when they matched a U.S. military linguist with a Hezbollah-linked terrorist. 62-year-old Miriam Thompson, a U.S. military linguist, was sentenced to 23 years in prison for passing sensitive information to a Hezbollah-linked boyfriend. Thompson worked overseas with top-secret clearance and in 2019 was found to have exposed the names of at least 10 sources to her boyfriend. Prosecutors pushed for a 30-year sentence. The judge gave her 23, stating that she was a sympathetic individual. Thompson stated that she was desperate for love in her old age and forgot who she was for a short time. It turns out she was Wookin Panub in Hezbollah places. The Daily Apple, one of Hong Kong's foremost pro-democratic tabloids, was shut down by Chinese Communist Party this week for violating the national security law put in place last year. This is yet another nail in the coffin quickly becoming made entirely of nails for Hong Kong. Support for the tabloid has been widespread despite what pro-communist party sales have been trying to spread online. Seriously, the best part about all this is watching the pro-CCP Twitter bots performing mental gymnastics, trying to convince the internet that no one cares and everybody wants it shut down. This week, they printed their last issue, and to totally dispel any idea that no one cared, it was their largest run of one million copies and selling out nearly everywhere in the first morning. Those that have been willing to speak up and voice their sadness are being stomped out by the CCP. Still, many have expressed hope in persevering after the outpouring of support for the tabloid Daily Apple. Stay strong, Hong Kong, and may the world remember the immortal words of Paladin Chang. That guy one time with the Hong Kong flag at that protest that said, Don't trust China! China is asshole! In crazy dictatorship news, President slash merciless tyrant of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, has threatened to jail any citizen who has not been vaccinated against the coronavirus. When news like this comes out about a politician possibly saying some things extreme like this, some politicians will back down or recant some of the things they've said once there's an overwhelming negative response from the public. But would a good dictator ever do that? Of course not. When asked if he would like to elaborate more in depth on his comments, Duterte said, you choose vaccine or I will have you jailed. Seems pretty simple. In this case, jail is actually the better option. Duterte is known for his extreme stance on drugs to the point where he has his own militia that carries out hits on suspected drug dealers and users. So my guess is if people decide not to get the vaccine, they'll get shot by someone wearing a mask and jean shorts and then infected with the coronavirus when they're dead so Duterte can make it seem like he's actually saving his country. 
But before the random killing start, Duterte is really trying to sell getting the vaccine by letting people know how poorly his prison systems are run. He said, I'm telling you, those police jail cells are filthy and foul smelling, and the police are lazy and cleaning. This is where you will be, which almost comes across as a threat that if you don't get vaccinated, he will put you somewhere where you will actually just get the coronavirus. Duterte continued saying, if you don't get the vaccine, I will have you arrested and I will inject the vaccine into your butt. We can only assume that vaccine is a six foot eight, 300 pound man waiting for you in prison. A Miami building has collapsed and has caused a massive emergency response team to descend along the strip of Miami Beach to begin searching for survivors. Two thirds of the 12 story residential building collapsed early morning Thursday. While we wait for additional information, we can tell you that every 40 years, these buildings must go through a structural foundation assessment. This building was constructed in 1981, and per law then was in the very process of being examined for structural integrity when the collapse occurred. It is said that the building was going through massive renovations. There is no additional information yet on the exact number of missing or dead, but our hearts go out to South Florida as we wait for additional news on this terrible tragedy. Rednecks are a special kind of breed of people. They're able to survive off beer and cigarettes alone. They can turn any piece of lawn equipment into a racing vehicle. And they don't care who the IRS sends, they aren't paying their taxes. Oh, and they also love to fucking party. Now that COVID is going away, rednecks are coming back out to cause a ruckus. An event called the Redneck Rave, hosted by country rapper Justin Time, slowly descended into madness over the weekend. This event was held in Blue Holler, Kentucky, where it attracted over 10,000 rednecks, doubling the actual population of the town, which didn't even have a stoplight. Meth? Yes. Jacked up pickup trucks? Yes. But stoplights? Not so much. Police found meth, weed, and an open alcohol container in the first car they checked on the checkpoint going to the event. When you start out with meth, you know things are gonna be absolutely lit. The event featured regular redneck stuff like mud wrestling, demolition derby, and even goldfish racing. I'm guessing that is exactly what it sounds like, which is ridiculous enough. But once the alcohol and methamphetamine started flowing, things went deep south quickly. Friends turned on each other, men fought lovers who were also their sisters, people lost the last couple of teeth they had. It was madness. One man slit his friend's throat and is now on the run. A woman was strangled until she was unconscious and left in the mud. And another woman lost an entire finger. The most intense injury happened when a man was driving a side-by-side -side buggy. He drove it right through the forest and was impaled by a tree. He was airlifted to the hospital with the branch still sticking out of his chest. Just in time, whose hit song, Where the F*** Are All My Teeth, which went double copper, said that even though things got a little crazy, he thinks his staff did a great job of handling everything. Currently, one person is still on the run for murder and 30 people have been charged with drug-related offenses, so I would say not so much. A New York Times study dunked on Subway this week saying that there was no actual tuna DNA in the tuna Subway puts in their sandwiches. Yummy. The New York Times wasn't just bored and made the decision to try and take out the sandwich giants. The investigation came after a lawsuit against Subway in January saying that their tuna was made from anything but tuna. The anything but tuna sandwich is one of the more popular sandwiches at Subway, so the social media backlash has been amazing to watch. Naturally, Subway said that these claims were baseless and threatening to the business. Unfortunately for Subway, in 2014, they got called out for using a chemical in their bread that was also used to make yoga mats that they have now phased out, don't worry. So maybe not completely baseless though, right? The lab that did the tests said that there are really only two possibilities that there was no tuna DNA found in the tuna. Number one, it was so heavily processed that whatever could be pulled out could not be identified. Or number two, it's just not tuna. Current speculation is that the tuna is either made up of the lower half of the Little Mermaid or the clownfish from Finding Nemo. Subway explained that DNA tests aren't that reliable and that the New York Times has even done articles disproving effectiveness of DNA tests before. But they make sandwiches, not science. So I'm going on a, I'm going on a limb and saying that their opinion for now shouldn't be considered. Subway has asked the DNA to be tested by the same lab that tests children's DNA to see who the parents are on the Maury Show for an unbiased result. A high school basketball coach at Coronado High School in California was fired this week for a not so delicious situation involving tortillas. Coach DJ LaPree 
led his team to victory Saturday night when his team beat Orange Glen High School in the CIF Southern California Regional Championships. After the team won, tortillas were thrown at the opposing team. Videos posted on social media show handfuls of tortillas being chucked through the air like frisbees at what looks like to be the opposing team's Hispanic players. Maybe not a good idea. The coach of the team tweeted that a random member of the community brought tortillas and distributed them out to people so that they would throw them at the other team at the end of the game. Even though it's hard to pin down any of the fault directly to the coach, JD was fired by the school board on a vote of five to zero. The school board held an emergency meeting because of the event, inviting parents of the community to air their grievances about it. I understand the racial insensitivity here and don't support anything like this, but after a wrestling match, win or lose, I wish someone would have thrown a tortilla at me. I would have just stood there like a baby bird with my mouth open waiting to catch it. I was always hungry. The school board said the only way the incident could have occurred without any ramifications if the players who threw the tortillas also threw ground beef, shredded cheese, and sour cream so everyone could just make their own burritos. For the team that lost and got the burritos thrown at them, I do feel for you guys. But here's an idea. I suggest giving the other team a taste of their own medicine. Next time you play, destroy them on the scoreboards, and after the game, just throw unseasoned chicken and saltines at them. John McAfee, creator of the super successful McAfee antivirus software, was found Epstein in his cell this week, the same day he found out he would be extradited to the United States for his criminal hearing. McAfee was serving a time in Barcelona prison for tax evasion after spending years on the run from the US authorities. Prosecutors claim that McAfee leveraged his fame in order to make over $23 million by recommending a number of digital coin cryptocurrencies to his Twitter followers. The issue here was McAfee was being paid to be a pitch man for the investment products, but didn't disclose how much he was being paid. In other terms, fraud. After getting millions of dollars, McAfee did what any person with an a ton of money would do. Bought a giant yacht and sailed all around Europe with a bunch of hot chicks. In 2007, McAfee's wealth was capped at around $100 million, but was destroyed during the financial crisis of 2008. That didn't stop McAfee, who started other companies and worked with other companies in the cryptocurrency field. While in Belize, he was a possible suspect in a murder case, so he cooperated with police to get his name cleared. Nope, he faked a heart attack to get back to the United States while the trial took place, actually. Like any person who seriously mismanaged their finances and has some sketchy backstory, McAfee decided to take a quick foiree into politicians running with the Libertarian Party. Of course, this went nowhere with his biggest support being the author of Star Wars books about the adventures of Lando Calrissian. When McAfee did end up in jail, he told people, if I were to be found dead by hanging, it would mean I was murdered. With conspiracy theories circulating and people jumping on speculations of his death, we just want to say McAfee didn't kill himself, Epstein didn't kill himself, and Maxwell didn't kill herself. She's still alive? The Australian and Tasmanian government accidentally committed penguin genocide by introducing endangered Tasmanian devils to an isolated island in the Tasman Sea. The Tasmanian devils were facing the threat of extinction due to a deadly facial tumor disease. I don't know how moving these animals to a secluded island would rid them of their facial tumors, but maybe people just felt bad looking at them, dying slowly, so they just wanted to ship them away to die. Who knows? But the devils did not go down without a fight. Originally, 28 devils were brought to the island in 2012, and that number slowly grew to about 100 in only four short years. Angry that they were left alone to die, the devils decided to go on a murder rampage and decimate the population of 3,000 penguins that lived on that island. Instead of spinning them up in a cartoon like Taz would do in Looney Tunes, they just went around and ate the f out of all these birds. There is no knowledge if the penguins were retaliate with a full frontal beach attack or if they will regroup on an island alone just to start again. But the Tasmanian government is taking steps to militarize the devil in a terrifying group of ankle-biting soldiers. And finally, in Florida man news, Florida resident Stephen Phillip is in hot water after pleading guilty to charges of buying parts of dead endangered animals without the proper paperwork, a clear violation of the Endangered Species Act. Griffin was busted after he met undercover wildlife agents in Texas on a two-year sting to buy two southern white rhino horns, four elephant ivory tusks, one African lion skull, and three leopard skulls for $9,750. On top of that, he is facing weapons charges for being in possession of several firearms as a convicted felon. Steven, buddy, my man, 
That pricing is too good to be true. Everyone knows a typical black market African lion skull alone goes for $3,500 plus. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, buddy. Don't do this again. But hypothetically, if you were, I would not look under U.S. Department of Interior Fish and Wildlife Services Form 3-200-19, which designates purchases legal under the import of sport hunted trophies of South African leopard and Namibian southern white rhinoceroses. I would also not recommend that you file the rest of the endangered animal parts under Form 3-200-29, which would classify them under Import-Export Master Lists of Wildlife and Biomedical Samples Clause. Of course, none of this would work unless you also filed for a port exemption permit, Form 3-200-2. This would be a terrible mistake. Good luck to you, Florida man. I hope prison time helps you learn your lesson. And with that, I'm Thomas Hunt. And I'm Pokey. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and if you find me hung in a jail cell a couple years from now, it might be because of all the information I just gave in Florida Man. As always, you should check out rangerup.com for some great deals using the code BNN to get 25% off of your purchase. And also make sure to check out Nick and Matt's OnlyFans page at Nick and Matt. See you guys soon and have a great weekend.